Is your German short haired pointer displaying aggressive or reactive behaviours to other dogs or other people? And it's causing you significant concern that you might have an aggressive German short haired pointer on your hands. Well, don't worry, because that is exactly what I'm going to help you with in today's video. Welcome back to the Fenrir German Shorthead Pointer Show. If you are new here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist and I'm the founder and CEO here at Fenrir canineleaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything you could possibly want to know about the incredible German Shorthead Pointer, but also how to become a high level canine leader that can raise perfect GSP companions. So if you are new here and you want to start that journey, hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and you'll never miss a future German Shorthead Pointer video. Now, now, as a canine behaviorist, I specialize in aggressive and reactive cases, usually with large, powerful working breeds. And the German short haired pointer definitely is an intense breed. And due to that high levels of prey drive in the wrong hands, could quickly spill out to very reactive and sometimes, unfortunately, aggressive behaviors. But there's definitely things that we can do. And there's definitely a strategy that you can put in place to help yourself get over this hurdle and get back to the, uh, the target of having that perfect that canine companion that is under control and a pleasure to be with and no matter where you are or whatever's going on around you. So I thought I'd jump in and do this video and explain what I would do when I would go through the process of working with a client that approached me with a German short head pointer that was showing aggressive or reactive tendencies. Now the way that I differ and I think the where I've had higher levels of success in being able to manage these kinds of aggressive and reactive cases is that I always put a huge emphasis on treating the problem at the root cause and actually solving the issue and solving the aggression and reactive behavior as opposed to simply focusing on a management strategy whether that's a distraction or lure away strategy that doesn't actually solve the issue and actually rarely does any good at all Sorry to quickly interrupt the video, guys, but I've just got to let you know that today's video is brought to you by our very own boot camp protocol. As a canine behaviorist, I've helped thousands of people be able to restructure their relationships with their dog, how to become a high level canine leader that can then address any behavior difficulties themselves to get to that point of having a perfect canine companion. So if you want my help with addressing any difficult behaviors you might be having with your dog, a link to our boot camp program is down in the description box below. So you can go check it out. There's tons of testimonials on the website it might be exactly what you're looking for but we'll get straight back to the video you were just watching so what we do is we take a two-fold approach first of all we treat the root problem secondly we do utilize management strategies but we utilize effective management strategies that allows us to regain control of the situation as a good calm consistent canine leader which is absolutely crucial that every dog owner becomes a high level canine leader themselves has the ability to control the situation because that is the essence of a leader is somebody that is in control so the way we utilize and we fix the root cause is we address the problem with the relationship between yourself and the dog aggression and reactivity is a clear sign that that dog does not see you as its clear calm consistent leader and it does not seek your guidance and direction and there is a clear communication breakdown between you and the dog to be able to let them know first of all the behaviors that we do want but also more importantly in the specifics of aggression and reactivity the behaviors that we don't want so the way we address that is i utilize my canine boot camp program we do have an online version of it if you are interested i'll leave the link in the description box below but that is a one month process that i use with all of my clients that is designed to restructure that relationship because that is the essence of why we have high levels of success there is no overnight solution there's no quick fix scheme as there is with anything worthwhile in life it requires commitment dedication Dedication, hard work and consistency now that one month program is a really structured routine way of being able to not only teach you how to be a high level canine leader because that is what's most important I'm not going to do it for you that's why I went and got a degree in education because my job isn't just fixing your dog for you that's easy I can do that no problem but then I can give it back to you and you'll go and completely ruin all that hard work anyway so the essence is about educating you on how to be a high level canine I need the boot camp program we do that we teach you the the basic principles and theories that are required to be a high level leader 
We then put a nice routine in place over that month to restructure that relationship between yourself and the dog. And then in that area, there's lots of times to work on obedience because obedience is important. I think a lot of people focus purely on obedience as the be all and end all for canine training and having a good relationship with your dog. That's not the case at all, but it is a big part of that. And being able to have that obedience is ultimately communication. It allows us to communicate effectively with our dogs. And the more obedience we do have and the more we're able to communicate with them we can display and ask for the desired behaviors as opposed to having no way of being able to control any negative behaviors so we work on those areas and over that month it's a process it takes time it like i say it doesn't happen overnight but we'll get to a point where the dog will start to seek guidance and direction from yourself because usually what's happening with reaction and aggression is it stems from a place of anxiety and fear in your german short-haired pointer what will happen is some stimuli or a trigger will occur that can be many different things but the principle is the same with all of them it causes concern maybe that's through a lack of socialization or simply through a lack of communication and trust with yourself but it causes anxiety it causes fear and because they don't know to look to you for guidance and direction in how to appropriately behave in that scenario they will make those decisions for themselves and when a dog makes a decision for itself in this world in our culture and our society which is completely foreign to a dog's mind they often will make the wrong decision and those wrong decisions will often spill out in reactive or aggressive type behaviors so the root cause fix is about restructuring that and having a dog that will go okay that trigger has happened they still have the same emotional response we're not making robots out of our dogs we want them to have personality and within personality just like it's humans fear and anxiety is an everyday part of our lives just as much as it is with a dog but just how when we get anxious and fearful it's not acceptable for us to run around panicking screaming shouting and attacking other people we need to learn to manage it and that's what we're expecting of our dog so we get to that that stage in the relationship where they experience that emotional response to the trigger or stimulus but instead of them freaking out and being reactive and aggressive we get more of a response along the lines of i am scared here what should i do boss we have then got the obedience and communication to say i thank you I understand that you're fearful and i appreciate that you're looking to me for guidance and direction what i want you to do is this if we're out on a walk, which is most top, uh, common for reactive type behaviors, that'll simply be, I would like you to walk nicely to heel, please. Excellent, fantastic. I can do that, I understand what that is. And as part of that boot camp protocol, we've got lots of space every single day to work on the obedience that's most specific to you. So if you don't have a good heel work, that is absolutely crucial to be able to manage reactivity effectively. So as part of that one month process, we would help you learn how to walk to heel. Now don't worry if you've got, if you don't have that ability with your German short haired pointer, we're gonna do videos to help you do that. We've got tons of content on this channel. We're gonna go through absolutely everything that's required to help you become a high level leader and have a perfect German short head pointer so don't worry but that I'm just going through the process that we would go through so we would work on that and that would be an ongoing process and that's the root cause fix is restructuring that relationship teaching you how to be a high level canine leader that has a dog that will look to you for guidance and direction and you better that communication pathway excellent that's the root cause of the problem in the meantime we need to be able to manage the situation and regain control so we would utilize a principle that i call correct redirect and reinforce now corrections in the dog world this day and age are heavily criticized it's a very kind of um it's one of those topics that gets people arguing and squabbling all the time and I don't buy into that. I simply understand what is effective and what works and what saves dogs' lives because that's what I care about. I don't care about arguing with people online. I care about helping people help their dogs so that those dogs don't end up in shelters or euthanized. Now, in a situation with reactivity or aggression, that is a one-track step uh, road towards that dog being put in a shelter and then being put down. So if correction-based approach helps stop that from happening excellent and i'm all for it now when it comes to what corrections to utilize i always take the bare minimum possible and scale up until we get to a point where it's effective at being able to achieve the desired outcome which is nipping that aggression and that reactivity in the bud so when we take our management strategy 
we've been working on heel works excellent we've got a dog that's on a loose lead and that environmental stimuli or trigger occurs we need to be able to snap them out of it now ideally we want to be able to use a verbal correction that might be an at or a no some people have uh, some discs that they keep on them that they can jingle which offers a bit of a, a positive punishment in terms of an auditory punishment um, or you can utilize a, a whistle or a horn i'm not a big fan of those methods but i think a nice verbal stern at, at or no if that's enough excellent then we don't need to go to the next level which would then be around physical corrections but if a verbal correction isn't good enough then we would utilize a physical correction I'm a fan of collar-based tools and we would use a collar-based correction. So we would use a very little snap on the lead just to get that snap response. We're not playing tug of war. We're not choking our dogs. We're not trying to hurt them. We're putting in a very well-timed, quick correction to be able to snap them out of that behavior, that emotional response from the trigger that's causing the reactivity or the aggression. What we want to do is, like I say, we get that snap out of it. We can then get the direction and focus back to us as the calm, consistent leader who is in control of this situation. We're simply saying, stop doing what you're doing. I am in control. You need to look at me. I'm going to tell you what to do. And we have to break through that hurdle to be able to make any ground on actually treating the issue of reactivity or aggression. You can't bribe them away. You can't distract or lure them away. That's not the principle. All that's doing is putting a plaster over the issue. And if the thing that they're being distracted by or what's causing that response is more interesting to them than a piece of cheese or a hot dog then you've run out of opportunities so we need to regain control as a good leader that's what the correction's there for we're not trying to hurt our dogs we're just trying to get their attention back to us once we've got that we then redirect so we've correct we move on to redirect which is come back into the heel position please when we get them back into that position we then go back into the positive world of reinforcing that desired behavior and as we go through this process as we go through through that boot camp program of restructuring that relationship as we work on nice heel work and communication in the form of obedience as we correct those negative behaviors and we reinforce and praise the desired ones you will quickly find that those negative behaviors will come down the desired ones will start to happen more and more and more and we'll get to a point where we'll lose the negative behaviors altogether the dog will instantly go to the desired behavior because they're aware that that generates the positive response from us then we can get back to a place where we can live in a positive only realm now like i say it's a heated debated topic but it's something that i use every day and i've saved a lot of dogs lives from utilizing this methodology and i promise you it's something that you can utilize to help your dog be a happier more content relaxed dog that doesn't need to live in anxiety doesn't need to live in fear and will be so much happier understanding that you are in control as the calm consistent leader that can take control in all situations and environments and if that means a little bit of correction just to snap them out out of an irresponsible behavior that can save that dog's life then i absolutely think that that is well worth doing so we're going to have loads of content to be able to show you exactly how to do that demonstrations of me doing that with other people's dogs that might be on this channel if it's specific to german short haired pointers or you can go and follow our channel over on fenrir canine training that will be documenting and demonstrating me working with dogs from a variety of of puppy training and going through a very positive approach to getting it right the first time all the way to extremely negative, aggressive behaviors and being able to rehabilitate and get those dogs back on track to be able to save their lives because that is everything that we do here at Fenrir, like I say, is all about that. So I hope you found that video useful. Go out, get after it, become a high-level canine leader, educate yourself and put in the time, commitment and dedication that's required. It isn't easy, but it is sure as hell worth it. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you're new because I can't wait to speak to you on the next episode of the Fenrir German Shorthead.